even though we talk about there are kind of degrees of depression, it is important for us to personalize our own experience with depression, especially in the clinical situation. So Beck's depression inventory is one that is used and just some of the ways uh, that depression is assessed is uh, on a sliding scale. I do not feel sad. I feel sad. I feel sad all the time and can't snap out of it. I am so sad and unhappy. I can't stand it. Or I am not particularly discouraged about the future. I feel discouraged about the future. I have. I feel I have nothing to look forward to. I feel the future is hopeless and things cannot improve. Or I do not feel like a failure. I feel I have failed more than the average person. I look back on my life and can see a lot of failure. I feel as I am a complete failure as a person. So this just sliding scale again in, in understanding the level of severity. Um, again, I think talking about, I, I do know even when I recently got a physical, this must be something new, uh, they gave me a version of Bex right. to fill out before I saw the doctor. Uh, again, I think they were looking primarily for suicidality, which we'll talk about a little later. But again, by just taking one of these inventories, thinking we've solved, we, we've decided, uh, talk about the relationship we need to really work through an inventory like that well. Certainly, you you need to have confidence in the, in the person you're talking to. They, you know, we work hard in our practice. When the call comes in, we don't just say, "All right, who's open for the next client that calls?" We work hard to make a match. Does this person are they? Do, they can tell us. Are you more likely to feel comfortable with a male or female counselor? You're more likely to feel comfortable with somebody in your age range. Uh, even sometimes. Um, not often, but sometimes denominational heritage is important to people. And so we, it's very important that the match between the counselor and the, and the client is a, one that is a setup for success. <clears throat> and then the client, because it isn't fun to go, it's like getting a root canal for most people the first time. That's It's not fun to go to the idea to go to counseling, but you know to uh, accept the fact that you're there and to push yourself out of your comfort zone and trust uh, after you've done some due diligence to pick someone that's a good match and to um, uh, probably uh, uh, decide to leave the thoughts out in the car, in the parking lot, that you don't need this or that true good Christian people don't ever get depressed, things that you may have picked up along the way that uh, aren't accurate. You know, I, I've done a lot of men's retreats in different churches and um, you can tell what kind of preaching and teaching people have sat under during the years of their Christian life. If they've been raised in a church where it's not okay to be honest about uh, how life affects us, as you said, being human, if it's not okay to, if your connection to God is based on your performance and having everything all figured out, if that's what you think wrongly, that, that your connection to God is based on rather than God's grace, then it's not safe to tell you anyone about your feelings. Uh, so you have to, at least, if you have any of that rattling around in your head, and that'll come up when you're depressed because depression seems to feed off your, your insecurities and your wrong thoughts, and it, it's, it's almost like a spiritual warfare uh, for, for many people. And <clears throat> so there's a component to it that it's sort of after you to pull you back. And you have to fight that and, and uh, trust your the, the Lord to take you with your good judgment to the right person. Um, so the, it does become biological in that, you know, when you notice that you're not just low, you don't just feel sad and blue like you might with some grief, but you actually ha are having physiological symptoms, then you're in it more deeply. You're gonna, you're gonna have high numbers. You're gonna have uh, large numbers for the back inventory or any other inventory and again, I would warn against filling those out on your own in isolation from someone who knows what to do with the results um, because depression is, is going to look different with different people. And your friends won't always understand that. You know, your friends may, they need to have the good wisdom to trust and to encourage you to get in there to see the professional, go talk to your doctor. Family doctors, primary care physicians are much more tuned in these days maybe the last 15 to 20 years, 
much more tuned in to psychological difficulties that exhibit physiologically or coexist with physiological problems. So you can, you can start with your primary care doctor and you should, and then he or she can refer you to someone that they've worked with with other patients who've done well and that will communicate back and forth. So it's a team of approach between you, you're part of the team, just as equal with the doctor and the therapist. It's all, it's not just them doing it for you, but you working together and then making yourself do the things that they tell you to do to take care of yourself, to, to have sleep hygiene, to, have, uh, to not allow yourself to isolate, to eat properly, to exercise, to do what is fun for you to do, even if you don't feel like it. You know, if you don't feel like going out to play golf with your buddies, go do it anyway. Right. Well, I just think in the, to, to get the assessment, and I want to pick up on some of those yeah. actions, to get the assessment right, again, I think it's a journey mm -hmm. to assessment, uh, and it needs to be done in community. Right. So again, the worst thing that can happen, I Google search, I take the inventory, I figured out what I have, that's probably, that's not a good way to do it. it. There can be some education in that, but ultimately it's gonna to need to be processed through in a more comprehensive way.